Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Amir Karam. I'm a board certified facial plastic surgeon. I'm also the founder and creator of the Karam MD skincare line. And today's episode of Skin School, we're gonna talk about a very fundamental and important topic, and that is how does the skin age? And why that's so important. For those of you who are tuning in and listening to this, I'm gonna assume that you're taking your skin seriously and you want to prevent or restore the skin aging changes. And the best way to do that, and the best way to know that you're doing it the most deliberate and fundamental way and you're not wasting time, money, and energy on things that don't necessarily work, is to understand and pair skin changes with skin treatments, whether they're topical active ingredients or whether they're microneedling, whether they're lasers or chemical peels, you need to understand exactly where along the skin aging continuum you are directing your efforts and energy to be able to get the changes that you're looking for. This is probably the most important step in the overall skin rejuvenation journey and continuum that you're endeavoring in. So without further ado, let's break it down. So what is skin? So skin is a lot more than simply the external covering our body. It is the largest organ in our body. It's metabolically active, it's hugely protective, it contains us, it actually gives us a lot of confidence. Think about what skin does to us when it looks bright and looks fresh and looks dewy and it has free of lines and wrinkles and pigmentation. It gives us a sense of empowerment and confidence and a positive sense of self. When you're younger, we take this for granted, minus some acneic changes that happen, you know, some blemishes, etc. maybe a sunburn here or there. For the most part, it delivers and we don't even have to think about it. And that is because there's an evolutionary biological set of changes that are happening that are maintaining and protecting the skin to look its best, to function its best, to give us the greatest opportunity to be the youngest, strongest version of us we can be. But genetically speaking, and this is an evolutionary fact, that as time goes on and we start approaching perimenopause or getting older, both male and female sexes, there starts to be less investment from our bodies to try to maintain the youthful appearance of skin. And we see that. And this is a very important paradigm to keep in mind because we take for granted what's happening when we're young, but our cells and our tissues and the memory that's embedded within the DNA of that tissue does not forget. And as a result, when we get older, it starts to show those changes. I'm gonna talk about that specifically when it pertains to sun in a moment. But what really is important to keep in mind is that these changes that we're also concerned about are changes that are being triggered by hormonal effects, changes in estrogen, progesterone, for example, decreases some of the important upregulation that creates collagen and elasticity in the skin. So as a result, when we see those changes happen, what ends up occurring is you see a descending trend of collagen production over time. And I'm gonna talk specifically about the collagen time curve in a moment, but I just want you to keep in mind that these are changes that are happening to everyone. They're changes that are predictable, but they're also changes that can be directly affected by what we decide to do to combat and defy them. So let's break it down. Young skin, we kind of mentioned it. It's free of pigmentation, it's firm, it's supple, it has essentially no lines or wrinkles. It basically has strong elasticity. You pull it, it bounces right back. And as a result of that clarity and lack of overall pores that comes from a strong architectural structure of the skin, it has a quality that we term luminosity. And luminosity is probably the most indirect, but you know it when you see it. It's basically the way light reflects off the surface of the skin. And that clear light reflection is what gives that skin radiance. And radiance is what the early Renaissance painters were always so enamored by when they drew these beautiful portraits of young women as they were displaying youth and beauty. You always see the way the skin and the light reflects, there's luminosity and radiance. And that is one of the, the fundamental qualities of young skin. And it's a culmination of all the different things that are happening lack of pores, lack of lines, lack of pigment, good moisture, good oil production, lack of dehydration, all these things coming together are giving the skin that quality. Now, 
That is something that slowly, unfortunately, begins to diminish as time goes on because of a combination of changes that are happening genetically that effectively decrease the production of collagen at the cellular level. The fibroblasts are the cells embedded in the dermis of the skin and they upregulate and form collagen. And what ends up happening is they begin to decrease production over time. And as a result of decreased production, what you start to see is the dermis starts to thin as time goes on. So as collagen production diminishes, skin thins as well. And with time, you start to see a breakdown of the elasticity and, and uh, suppleness of the skin as a result of this. Now, if you're looking at the skin on a cross section, you're looking at it cross, you've got the dermis that's thinning with age, you have the epidermis, which is the top part of the skin. The epidermis is actually increasing in size. And it's increasing in size because the stratum corneum, which is the uppermost top layer of the skin, is beginning to accumulate more and more dead layers of skin. That stratum corneum, if you look at it under a microscope, is like peels of an onion. It just has a thick layer of dead skin that basically impedes the light from being able to hit that glistening dermis. And as a result, the skin looks dull. So you get dullness, you get a textural change that feels rough, it doesn't have smoothness. Then as a result of all of those changes, the skin, when you look at it, you see crepiness. And now we're gonna talk about pigment. Pigment is born through the cells called the melanocytes. The melanocytes are there and there are different levels in different bodies. Like my skin has a lot of melanocytes because I'm a little bit darker, more fair Eastern European, lighter skin, more pale, less melanocytes. Melanocytes are protective against sun damage in the sense of sun burns, but they don't do anything necessarily to prevent the skin from aging because it's a different light that is affected. There's UVA and UVB light. UVB is the responsible agent for sunburns and skin cancers, while UVA is responsible for breakdown of collagen and loss of elasticity and pigmentation. So these melanocytes begin over the years when we're younger, absorbing all this light, free radicals, UV damage, and as a result, they working hard, 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 hard to suppress and reduce the production of the melanin that eventually causes pigmentation. But at some point, the body just simply says, okay, let it all flow. And letting it all flow means the pigments start to release and the increased production of melanin and pigment is responsible for the blotchy brown spots that you see on your skin. Now, what's interesting is when, again, when we're young, there's a lot of mechanisms to suppress and avoid this, but it doesn't forget the damage that's been done. And the cumulative damage that's been done over years is what pro provides the impetus for the pigmentation. Now, let's, Take a moment to kind of summarize a little bit. We have pigmentation that's, that's born through sun exposure and the body's lack of uh, suppression. That's born out of the melanocytes. You've got loss of collagen elasticity that causes a thinning of the dermis that causes the skin to get weak, crepey, wrinkled, and filled with lines. Then you've got a thickening of the epidermis that's causing the skin to become dull and the dullness blocks the light reflection, gets, gets rid of that quality that we all love, which is radiance and luminosity. And instead you see dullness and rough texture. Now, another really important part is what's happening to the pores. Just to be very clear, and this is a super important point to understand, what's happening at the pore level, pores are no more than just simple channels that connect the surface of the skin with the sebaceous and sweat glands. So what ends up happening is the sebaceous glands produce oil or sebum. And they normally are supposed to be there because your skin needs a certain level of oil on it. But when the epidermis gets blocked by either dirt, debris, or dead cells, in combination with a weakened dermis that causes these pore channels to kind of pinch and crinkle, what ends up happening is the pore gets blocked by either or both of those mechanisms. When the pore gets blocked, the sebum that's trying to get out cannot get out, and as a result, it creates dilation. Dilation creates the presence of enlarged pores. Now, this is super important. When an enlarged pore occurs, visibly on the surface of the skin, it looks like little dots and pits. Doesn't mean that those pores didn't exist before, but it simply means that they have become enlarged because the skin is filled with pores. It's just you normally can't see them if they have normal flow and expression and everything is running smoothly. Now, when the pores get blocked, 
with dirt, debris, or dead skin cells, and they get dilated, well, that creates irregularity and, and discoloration as well, and also creates this kind of uh, look, especially on areas where we have high levels of uh, sebaceous glands, like the, the nose and, and the foreheads and things like that, you're gonna start to see a lot of, of uh, little black dots and those black heads and white heads, and all that is just basically different types of, of semen production through these, um, through these pores. So that's the origin of pore creation as a result of aging. Now, it can also be simply because you don't take good care of cleansing your skin, and you can see pores enlarged in younger people uh, because of a different mechanism that's not because of the skin, you know, sort of breaking on the pore and causing the, the pore to get blocked that way, but simply because of clean. And that's why cleansing, for example, is an incredibly important step in the overall process of managing skin. So now we have pores, we have discoloration, we have thinning of the dermis, and we have thickening of the epidermis. There's another mechanism that's going on, and that is the water and oil balance of the skin. One of the things that happens as we age, both in combination of a lot of sun exposure in addition to just this overall mechanism of you know, managing the uh, proper balance and it just, the skin sort of just gives up on, the, on all of this as we get a little bit older, especially as we get into our 40s and 50s and beyond, skin becomes dehydrated. It loses that suppleness and fullness, and that's partly, again, because of the, it doesn't draw as much fluid into it, <clears throat> but partly because of the mechanisms that, uh, that existed before to do that start to, to cool down. But also, there's another very important thing that's happening, and that is the exchange and equilibrium of, of oils in the skin. Sometimes it's, it's a blockage, and sometimes it's just an environmental, like what you're using on your skin. If you're using um, products like, uh, you know, foaming cleansers, and you're getting a lot of sun exposure and all this kind of stuff, that can both create an environment where you're upregulating and creating more oils to kind of overcome some of the dehydration that's happening, and you get more greasy or oily looking skin. In other cases, you could be dry as a result of the same mechanism. So equilibrium is a combination of what comes up in the skin as well as what's happening externally as well. And that's an important, you know, very, very important target of overall, you know, skin management. When you're looking at this, you're like, wow, you know, this is pretty complicated. There's a lot going on. There absolutely is. I mean, the skin aging process is not simple. And as a result, there's no simple solution to addressing it. And it really does require, you know, a very mindful and very deliberate approach to skin treatment and aging. But I'll tell you this, and we're gonna, we're gonna talk about this in detail later, but fundamentally, what's absolutely critical and important is that every one of these contributing factors, these problem areas get addressed simultaneously in order for us to return or preserve that radiance and luminosity and suppleness of young looking skin. And the great news is, the beautiful part about all this is, this, the management, prevention, and rest restoration of skin is totally doable and it's 100% in our control. It's, I'll just give you a little preview. It's a combination of sun protection, the use of proper active ingredients on your skin, and this was really the origin of my desire to develop CaramMD and specifically the trifecta to be able to nail every single one of these changes head on and the occasional but yet deliberate use of individual uh, treatments that may be uh, warranted in certain types of cases, things like microneedling, um, lasers, and all that kind of stuff. Combine all of that, you know, sort of the pathway and do it in a very committed, consistent, and continuous way. We're gonna talk about this too later. It's called the three C's. And what that basically does is means that your skin can improve. So I don't want you to walk away from this and just so, oh geez, my skin is, is going down this path, what can I possibly do about it? Nothing, no, ball is in your court, you have full control, and I'm gonna teach you and guide you on how that can be possible. And that's really the inspiration and motivation of what the CaramMD brand is all about, is to give us the pathway and the knowledge and the empowerment to be able to do the right things to address these changes and ultimately get the best skin possible. All right, folks, that does it. That is Skin Aging 101. I hope that has uh, been a useful, um, understandable, and a digestible uh, piece of information that you can use and uh, build upon as we get a little bit further in this series of Skin School. And uh, for those of you who, have, who haven't already, make sure you 
you uh, subscribe to the channel, Skin School, in addition to our facial rejuvenation videos, um, we're gonna be going um, regularly one to three times a week. We're gonna be having um, videos on the topics that, uh, that you, you need to know about in order to manage and defy aging. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. Uh, make sure you send it to friends and family. Let's get the word out. Let's get everyone educated. And um, if you haven't already, hit like if you enjoyed the content of this. And if you want to learn more about whether your skin regimen is, is hitting the mark and doing the right things, take the skincare assessment where you can find the link here on our channel and on our website as well. And then finally, if you um, have any questions or comments, drop them in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the topic or you wanna learn more about specific topics, drop them below or just have questions about this, more than happy to address. All right, folks, exciting stuff here. Look forward to sharing more with you in future episodes of Skin School. Take care.